on today's episode, before we get to do any work, we got uh, electrician Silent Mike over here, just uh, doing some reworking on the panel. You Gotta certified? You certified? You know what you're doing? Gotta have heat. Michael came into the shop this morning, and uh, what 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 happened again? Something something went boom. Something went pop. Something went pop. Something went pop. And it smelled like propane. Mm, perfect recipe for a great natural disaster. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> All right, so we actually had a problem that I never really told you guys about. We were still very unsure of uh, a lot of information, so I didn't really want to bring it to your attention until we may have kind of come to a conclusion, which uh, I think we're pretty close. As you can see, we have uh, we have installed the uh, WaterJet 5000 mod here. Uh, we've got our uh, uh, NHRA approved device right here, um, but what what was happening uh recently was uh obviously we don't drive it a ton in the cold so the first couple times we drove it when it was really really cold out uh you'd start the truck up truck had great heat no problem uh you would get on the highway maybe 10 15 minutes after you already have heat as soon as you get on the highway ice cold until you um got unless you switched it to high high so um with talking with Mark, uh, Mark has actually had a similar problem and these fourth gens apparently uh, have a little bit of a problem with uh, the heater core getting plugged up. So the smallest orifice in the entire cooling system on these fourth gens, which I believe is the inlet to the heater core, which is very, very, very small. So it's very easy for uh, the inlet side to get plugged up. Uh, as you're on the highway cruising, maybe higher RPMs, um, I, I think they have a little bit of a tendency to get blocked up. So I thought that that might be the problem. Um, it was really, that was our only heat issue. Mark went ahead and told me to go get this uh, OTC. Here's the part number, uh, 6043. So what we've been doing this morning besides getting completely soaked is uh, you hook up this gun and then you got shop air and it kind of just it's, it's a power flush gun so we've hooked it up in reverse to kind of flush out uh the heater core right at the firewall i'm not sure yeah right here you can show them this is uh all this I'm trying to get it all out all this black stuff floating around right in here I don't know if you can see it real well, but there's a whole bunch of black stuff. Black stuff floating around in here that got flushed out. So uh, I hope that that's our issue, but that's where we're starting at uh, this morning. I think we're pretty much done at this point besides uh, we making a mess. But uh, Why are you so wet? <laughs> well, you know, this little turn dial here, uh, you know, we may have gotten all the way off and all the way on mixed up. And then, of course, when you put shop air behind a, a water gun, it uh, it creates for a little wet and wild situation. So, uh, yeah, we flushed the heater core. <laughs> I hope everything is fine this morning. Uh, so we're going to get started on installing the rest of the second gen swap kit, the uh, coolant bypass, uh, all of the other stuff that we have. But... I wanted to try and maybe knock this out first. That way we don't get it all back together and then have to do this when it's all nice and, and done. So flush the heater core out this morning. Hopefully that solves our heat problem and we'll rock on getting the truck back in the shop and I may have to change, but. <laughs> Real quick rundown before we, before we cut. Uh, water in, shop air in. If you guys were wondering uh, to do it in reverse, the bottom uh, connection is uh, is in reverse so we're uh the flow comes from the cylinder head into the top one comes out of the bottom one and goes to that lower uh, outlet piece so to flush it in reverse we're obviously going down and then up versus the normal the normal path so hopefully that helps if you guys have a similar heat issue might be your problem might not this is not a confirmed fix but we did get stuff out of it You know what I was gonna say? Just give it a little tappy. 
little tap tap taparoo. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we went ahead and decided to install a uh, Michael. What would you call the correct term for that? I always call it freeze plug, but I don't think it's called freeze plug. Soft plug. Core plug. Core plug. Some type of plug. So the factory. Uh, block drain that we were using for the compounds. We could have put a cap over the uh, fleece drain or installed a couple different other things, but we decided to go back with the most uh, OEM problem free down the road solution, and that would be to just tap a uh, tap a plug back in there, put some red Loctite in there. Don't knock it all the way in, but uh, that should make sure we don't have any oil seepage, crankcase pressure, all that stuff coming through up there. So that's blocked off. And we can check that off the list. Okay, guys, just just to, just to clarify, Michael does not have three or four monsters a day. He has five. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Michael has a very strict uh, one a day policy. You know, one a day keeps the doctor away. We we all don't want to uh, end up at the hospital. But anyway, guys, we're back on the uh, 18, getting the fleece second gen swap just done. All of these miscellaneous odds and ends here uh got our egt pyro plugged back in we're getting all of our heater core lines plugged back in we're working on the coolant and we're also working on uh the intercooler pipe which is uh, quite interesting uh very quite interesting here there is uh, a lot of a lot of little things uh so in conjunction with the fleece um second gen swap kit and if you have a Banks intercooler which is what we do the intercooler pipe is a little bit different because this intercooler pipe is designed to work with the factory intercooler they give you everything you need uh, to hook up to your factory intercooler which is here which has the smaller uh, inlets and outlets than the Banks one so luckily luckily we have got this Banks boot which they give you this is actually the opposite so if you have a Banks intercooler without the upgraded pipes this boot is what you are going to need as well as maybe just a little modification on the intercooler pipe we're gonna have to add can you see that down there silent mic can you hey turn hey turn your mic on boop, boop. okay people can hear you now uh, so what we're doing is we need, we need, we need a little extra length. <laughs> I know common problem for us guys. You know, you just, you need, you need a couple extra inches. So we're going to have to, uh, weld a little bit on that intercooler pipe. Good thing. Uh, you see it? Hey, you, you know, what would a day be without a silent mic and his welder? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we go. So we need to add about three inches to that. We're trying to get that measurement right now. And on top of that, we are going to just continue to hook up all of the uh, coolant lines associated with the exhaust brake. You guys gave me a little bit of crap and maybe I didn't clarify enough. Um, there are other exhaust brakes, but this is the first exhaust brake that, I mean, it's, it's the best exhaust brake option for a lot of different reasons. Uh, it's electronically controlled. It is plug and play. Works with your factory button. There's no air compressor, no lines, no hoses. Um, basically, they give you this little harness that plugs into your factory plug. You go in there, you run that in there, your factory button works. It's got all different kinds of modes. Um, it is the smartest exhaust brake. Uh, because of the computers that are inside and programmed in that exhaust brake. We'll go over a couple more little features here. We're just going to kind of keep plugging away and try to get this kit done and running. Because I know that's what you guys care about. You guys care about, you know, just just raw, sweaty American diesel horsepower. So we're just trying to make that happen for you guys. Get this thing buttoned up so we can go drive it. How many How, how many inches do you need to add there? Uh, well, it's two and three quarters. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's not three inch. Oh, it's not three inch? No. Is that the same with this boot? This boot is two and three, three quarter or whatever? Yes. Oh, so we need to go. Oh, boy. All right. It's dumpster diving. Manhunt begins for... Oh, boy. All right. Let's go see what's in stock. Would you guys just look... At Big Bertha up on the lift. My goodness, does this make Greg so uncomfortable? Michael's like, why, why? What do you what do you mean? I'm like, this thing is huge. Huge. These back wheels and tires weigh a million pounds. We are rocking and rolling, pretty much almost done. We are getting underneath here to wrap up the exhaust. 
get you a pretty good shot right up in here. Here's a money shot for you. Uh, we have spilled a little bit of coolant this morning. No big deal, but uh, we're uh, just, our, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, let's, I was gonna try and get the, uh, the ladder up there and loosen up the uh, one clamp, but Michael's got a uh, much better idea. You need my help there, short stack? Nope, got this. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, what we have to do, the uh, downpipe that comes with the kit, I have already cut back the factory exhaust too far, so we need to actually add a section of the downpipe that they give you with this kit. So, of course, a little, little welder action will get fixed right up. We're gonna have to just weld a uh, section of pipe, probably four or five inches, so we're gonna mock that up real quick, and then I can set this thing down. And we are pretty much ready to, ready to rock and roll on this baby. That warm up mode. That's your Sounds. that's your foot. Yeah, that's my foot. That's your foot coming on and off the throttle. Yep. That's how instant it is. Literally zero percent throttle comes right on. Yeah, it's not even like fueling yet. It's already yeah. Heck yeah. Exhaust break on. Let me let me fix my hat. Where's my hat? Really 
gives it a like a like the closest yeah. it, like engine brake I've ever heard. Yeah, you like, just get that like quick like open shut of air noise like like it's still an exhaust brake but it it feels like a engine brake. Yeah. It is it is definitely doing some serious stopping power. We, yeah, we st we stopped just to get the thumbnail, and Michael's like, uh, "Is any does anyone just see this uh, this little mini guy right here? You sure we can't uh, fit this in the bed? We, we, we've been talking about doing some trenching for some power. It's just a it's just a cute little guy. I mean, I I was thinking more like one of those, but this might be a little bit more in the price range." <laughs> How's she feel? She feels aggressive. <laughs> it is aggressive. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. The road. The road is so loud. Like I'm not sure how it sounds on the camera, but I can. I can hear it coming a mile away. Yeah. Like it's. It is rowdy in person on on camera. I'm not sure how well the mic is going to uh, pick that up, especially on this really busy road. But how's she feel otherwise, though? It feels really smooth. Michael, Michael says that the exhaust brake is so rowdy that's giving him a headache. Yes. Like, it is that. It's like airbox noise. Yeah. It is, it is way stronger than a factory exhaust brake. That is 100% sure of that sun right in my eyes. My goodness gracious. <laughs> in case you really want to slow down and reverse. I didn't know if we were doing reverse, <laughs> Oh man. And this thing sounds like a tank. I love it. I love it. Michael Scott from the office. <laughs> Alrighty guys, we are back from the first test drive on the dually. She is back. Man, she feels really, really good. I'm super pumped. Everything came out really, really nicely. Like uh, like I said, we kind of wrapped up. Did a hot retorque on the exhaust manifold studs, also on the turbo to, uh, um, I'm sorry, the exhaust housing two manifold hardware. Um, just gave it a, it is technically now a stud instead of a bolt, so we went ahead, did a hot retorque on it. They did move, so I would say that it's definitely worthwhile if you guys have ever had an issue with studs or anything like that loosening up, give them a hot retorque. Uh, you know, definitely put a wrench on them, but 
Everything is good. Like I said, all we did was uh, do the turbo, do the exhaust brake, change nothing else, um, and everything functions exactly how it should. Uh, did not need to do anything else after the fact um, as far as anything you like that goes. So uh, everything works as, as, as basically basic. <laughs> Woo! Words. Words. Uh, so everything works exactly like factory. Your factory exhaust brake button has automatic mode and full engagement mode. So your braking and cruising exhaust brake comes on and then just when your braking comes on, um, Again, the fleece exhaust brake, super, super smart now that it's hooked into the computer of the truck, uh, so it knows throttle position, uh, even has ABS mode, so if your ABS kicks on, the exhaust brake will not come on. Um, has a lot of other cool features uh, that integrate with your factory computer. So it kind of knows, the so the exhaust brake knows what the truck is doing, uh, RPM, all of that kind of stuff, throttle position, like I said. Um, so literally instantly, as soon as it sees 0% uh, uh, throttle, comes on instantaneously. I'm telling you this thing is super, super powerful. So 10 out of 10 recommend everything is functioning exactly like it should. Zero issues. Uh, really, really, I mean, what else, uh, what else could you want? It, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, uh, activates when it's supposed to. We did not have any type of hiccup or anything like that. Um, just overall, Really, really nice to have your exhaust brake back right on the button, um, and ha it's, uh, the the true test is the true test is towing. Like we're not, we didn't get a chance to hook up to the trailer. That'll be a separate thing. Uh, how this thing uh, turbo wise performs to the old turbo setup, how the exhaust brake works under towing, um, but even just not towing, I can tell it is it is a beast. So didn't really get a chance to show you guys all of the finished finished details. Uh, we got coolant everywhere, so we went ahead and got some Renegade. Shameless plug on the Renegade stuff. Discount code down below if you guys want. This is a perfect Christmas gift, by the way. Who doesn't love detailing stuff? But uh, went, ahead and, went ahead and wiped it all down. But intake-wise, everything is on there. Everything is nice. Fits really, really nicely. Manifold turbo. Went ahead and threw on our PTP turbo blanket. Uh, definitely keeps the underhood temps good. Keeps the heat where it's supposed to be. Clearance wise, I'm telling you guys, the fleece downpipes are the best de fitting downpipes, quality downpipes I have ever seen. Uh, exhaust went together perfectly. Added a short, short section to the existing exhaust. And here's just kind of a quick under, under the wheel well shot before I put the fender liner back in. Went ahead and got uh, the intercooler pipe extension kind of put in there. You can see we added that, that worked out perfectly. And the intercooler pipe actually fits really, really nicely around your coolant hose. This, uh, this uh, coolant line fits really, really nicely. So overall, just a very nice, very, very nice fitting kit. The only thing we did modify and change, if you guys see down here, this, I would call it almost like a coolant manifold. Instead of using the plastic tees that they provide, just, I mean, I'm just not a huge fan of plastic tees. It's just more of a personal thing. So what I did is, and again, it's kind of hard to see, We've got our main firewall connection up here, and then you've got the connection that goes down to the uh, lower outlet hose, and then this line right here goes to the brake, and then this line here goes to your tank. So I kind of all put that into one little manifold instead of splicing T's, stuff like that. As far as tips and tricks, that's really, uh, we had to modify the intercooler pipe a little bit. We changed this manifold up here for the coolant line. Other than that, plug and play, Bolt on, ready to go. Super, super nice. I'm so excited. That is pretty much going to wrap up today's video. Definitely took a little bit longer than anticipated to kind of wrap up everything as nicely as we wanted to, but the dually is back in action. I'm excited to uh, continue to drive it with the new setup, kind of uh, see what I like, see what I don't like, compare it. Uh, that way I can give you guys a good rundown, especially when we hook up the trailer, but uh, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up. She is back. She sounds. She sounds really good. Nothing nothing beats the sound of a second gen swap. So anyway, we got plenty of updates coming, shop stuff coming, race truck stuff coming, but the dually is back, ready for tow duties. So we will see you guys in the next video. Should have a winner very soon for the uh, toolbox giveaway. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that and make sure you guys hit the thumbs up button. I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.